All right, this discussion uh, on the pro wrestling media stems from the press conference at Backlash last week, where a young journalist by the name of Lucas uh, Sharpio, I, I don't know if I'm getting that right yeah, necessarily. Yeah, I, I think, yeah. He asked a question that uh, he he used the names of two websites, Pro Wrestling Illustrated and Fightful. Uh, pro Wrestling and, Insider and Fightful. I'm sorry, Pro Wrestling Insider. And Triple H, uh, Paul Levesque, uh, made a comment about them not being reputable or, or whatever. And then what we learned uh, is that he was told by a WWE PR person that uh, the question was... What what was the term? I forgot the term that that the no, PR stupid person question. Stupid, stupid question. question. Yes, yeah. stupid, stupid, question, stupid question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so, really... and then there was obviously fallout from that. I saw lots of uh, you know lots of tweets about it and, and, and such. But wh where do you wh what what is your overall take as being you know the law the the person who's been in this business as part of the media and, and a journalist the longest? Like like what do you think about what happened? Mm. I think it's very sad in a lot of ways. Um, just, just, I, I don't know. I just, when, um, you know, I just thought a normal question and, um, you know, Levesque just said something probably without thinking and probably he would want to walk back. He can't say, I'm sorry, publicly. They you were know, in I, a rush to get off the air as well. Cause they had the, well, the Kentucky Derby thing. Yes. Yeah. It was actually, they actually had finished the press conference it was done this was your last question and it wasn't this question and then paul goes we got four minutes let's take one more and that was the question so you know and the question was about you know the guy was essentially asking if ronda rousey's comments had anything to do with drew gulick being released and he said well you know he's not released he's they're just not going to renew his contract when mm -hmm. it's on which is the same thing um and then people are jumping on you know those guys for oh you got it wrong and it's like yeah, you know, it, it's like it, it's the same thing. So they, they th those guys, as far as and then they first went on Lucas because it's like oh, we never said it was Ronda Rousey, and it's like, yeah, you didn't, and that's right, you didn't say it, but it's like that's what it was. You know, no matter what Triple H says, I mean, the timing is in, is right there. You know, and then they come up with these other reasons, and they're all true, by the way. You know, as far as like that stuff. If the, you're talking stuff, about the the bullying the bullying the bullying after. stuff yeah but it's like it's like these are stories from a long time ago and it's like if that was if that was the reason this would have happened a long time ago it happened right after the ronda thing they had an investigation right after the ronda thing i think that they just felt that the ronda thing got so much publicity and he's not important he's a main salary roster salary guy who was in NXT, I believe, or or whatever. But it's just, he's not, um, you know, he's not Kevin Owens and he's not Seth Rollins who, you know, will, you know, will take the bad publicity, you know. Um, it, we don't need to take bad publicity for Drew Gulak. And there's other reasons too, but obviously that that's why it happened. They won't say that. But then everyone getting on, well, we never said that. And it's like, but you know, and it doesn't mm -hmm. matter if it, and, and you know what? Yeah, you didn't, you didn't say that. And he didn't say you said it, but he was just so, so he, he's gotten, I just think it's so sad the the heat that he's gotten for just being, you know, I, I don't even call it ballsy for just asking a, a question that should have been asked, you know I mean? And it's granted, it's like, um, was that, I think that was like the only real question in that whole press conference book because they're in France. So you didn't have, you know, you didn't have the the guys who would have asked that would have probably still been allowed in so you you had your just you know press conference i mean nobody asked about vince or anything like that you know or anything real um you know or any you know real questions and so it's just like that that was just a you know it was it was sad that that paul Levesque said that um it was sad the way that those guys reacted you know um but whatever, you know, it's fine. And then everyone. When you say those guys reacted, do you mean that those two websites wanted to pull the pull themselves away from that story or from Triple H's comments immediately? Yeah, yeah. They didn't want to complain to Triple, you know, that Triple H wronged them because it's like, um, 
you know, I mean, I, I will give I'll give Sean Sapp credit because when they called up Sean Sapp to apologize, I thought what he wrote made it very clear that, um, you know, when they said like it had, you know, we, we didn't mean it when it came to you. You know, he was like, this is what they told me. And I, and I reading between the lines and he even pretty much said it, it's like, you know, I don't believe it, but that's what they told me. You know, he, and the other thing about Sean, I think he was dealing with a, a funeral of a fa of maybe his grandmother while all of this stuff was happening. So he's kind of offline and I'm sure yeah. his phone's blowing up. So that is a part of this that that he had to deal with as well. Yeah. Um, just not, not excusing anything or giving that, but I know he was dealing with that. Uh, I saw yeah. that. Earlier. Yeah. You know, well, I, 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 I have nothing really negative to say other than, you know, in, in the sense of when, um, they sent him the thing and I, I'm sure he wrote, you know, put that thing up the whatever it is, the cheese that they sent him, which is like an inside joke. You know, it's like, um, I would never have done it, but you know, and a lot of people jumped on him over it. Um, but it's that's a that's a minor thing to me you know i mean people want to make a bigger thing out of that than it than it is um but i thought like look neither of them not neither johnson nor um or or, or was mike johnson so neither mike johnson nor um nor um um you know sean. fightful you know sean whatever fightful neither of them deserve that credit because both of them as far as that aspect of doing things they're they're credible sources like if i read something from either of them you know I, I would believe it. I mean, sometimes, you know, I'll check and maybe it's not exact, but it's probably, it's, and even if it's not, it's close, or even if it's a little off, like everything, you know, it's like, it's, it's like, it's a, it's a business with a lot of people that, you know, stories kind of get changed along yeah, the people line. are There's, talking to lots of different people. Right. So it's like, it's like, I, I'm never like, you know, I, I think they do a good job as far as that goes, as far as like the reaction, you know, of, I just thought that it was like, um, immediately like we have to tell everyone that they like us and it's like you know it's like they're not supposed to like you if you're doing a good job they don't like you you know they'll put up with you i mean they'll, they'll put up with you you know if you're good enough and you're important enough they'll put up with you but you don't want to be their friends you know you don't want to be there you don't want to make be their enemies just to be their enemies that's bullshit too but it's like I just thought that there was this thing of like um, this idea that, oh, you know, we have to um, we have to make sure that everyone knows that we're they still like us. They still like us. They didn't mean it. They didn't mean it. And it's like, first of all, you know, it's a flippant remark that 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 Levesque said that he probably wouldn't again. But do you really think, you know, these wrestling people have been in this around this business for 40 years, 50 years in some ways, but 40 years doing this. And it's like. Do they really like the the reporters? They do, you know, they put up with them. They'll be nice to them. It's part of the thing. But they want to own everything. They want to control everything. How many times did they, they tried to start their own news services, just failed because it, <laughs> it didn't come. They don't want anyone else in this business other than them. They want to control the entire Bra Breaking business. their own steroid failure stories. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I mean, the whole thing is, is that's the history. And it's like an endeavor. It's, it's not any different. It's like, that's, that's what it is. And that's fine. But I mean, this whole thing of people trying to act like, Oh, you know, they, they, they like me and, and this and that. It's like, number one, it's like, if, if you think they do, then you're not doing a good enough job. And, you know, so I was kind of, so some aspects of that kind of got me, um, I don't know, just was, wasn't, wasn't happy with it, but the, the, um, the stuff, you know, as far as like, um, Lucas, you know, he got like death threats and he, he he's had a ringer of a week himself, 21 year old guy you know and you know I, and i contacted him i actually asked him to do the show today um and because i wanted to talk with him about it and and you know because he did a show yesterday with um john pollock and brandon thurston he got more negativity when in fact because he made the mention about like that that they told him it was a stupid question when yeah. it was the only good question and you know he got you know even more because these people just got in his case and i mean that's the other aspect of it too is is um um, you know, I mean, if, if you're going to do this and boy, do I know this, you, you better have, uh, you know, be able to handle this negativity. Um, cause you can't survive if you can't handle the negativity. Um, but, but I just thought like that this, this poor guy just asked a question and he's made to be the villain and he's not the villain for anything. And even, you know, people tried to like 
nitpick on him that was not, you know, a total nitpicking, you know, just because he, he, he asked, you know, a question that every single one of them probably could have asked and several of them should have asked given the timing of the cuts and everything like that. And um, the Ronda thing and the big picture stuff that's been, you know, circulating around WWE for decades that, mm-hmm. you know, hopefully they're trying to clean up and all that. But the uh, the past is the past and it's there. And um, the treatment of women in the past in this organization historically has been pretty appalling in a lot of ways. Other ways, maybe not. But but, um, you know, I mean, it's it was a it was a business where. Until now, because the women actually are draws and actually are superstars that where they have some leverage, are they still paid equally to the guys? Um, no, they're, they're still not. I mean, I know when uh, Mercedes signed, um, you know, I heard from a couple of the people there, you know, with, the, with, the, with what they thought that she made. And they were all so happy because it's like, you know, I mean, the reality is we don't get paid what the guys get paid, you know, mm-hmm. even if we're as big as stars. And um, they were hopeful that if Mercedes was getting paid at the level of the top AEW guys, in time, the market may correct itself, but it hadn't yet. So, um, you know, so there's there's that. But I mean, like, again, historically, you know, uh, until, the, you know, just a couple of years ago or, you know, the, the recent era with the with really the ascension of Becky Lynch and to an extent, Charlotte Flair and people like that, um, the they were. They were, um, you know, I mean, they weren't, they weren't taken as seriously, I would say, you know, when, you know, they talk about Trish Jackson Lee, they were never taken as seriously as the top main stars. Now they're, they're still not, but you know, it's a lot, the gap is much, much closer. And there is a recognition that there was a brief period of time where Becky Lynch was the biggest star that they had. I don't think she was the highest paid. She certainly, I, I doubt she was getting anywhere close to what Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar were getting, but, um, but she's also making a lot more than, um, you know, women in the past ever made too. You know, my thoughts on these press conferences, I just think that they're glorified PR. Um, and though I do respect the, the reporters who do ask attempt to ask real questions at them. Uh, I I'm just so turned off by the idea of them. Um, and that being said, Nick Khan is, like he's he's a real person in this business to where I because I follow a lot of Hollywood media. I follow a lot of sports media. He's a true power player. Absolutely. And and as far as and that's probably why that they apologize so quickly, because from the Nick Khan standpoint, Nick Khan was someone who was always very good with the media, although you never saw his name. But he always was. I mean, when he got hired in WWE, boy, did you hear people from out of everywhere, from Stephen A. Smith and and people like that. The Godfather, Nick Khan, right? It's like if you know, I I knew Nick Khan because I knew he negotiated those deals, and I yeah. also knew he was he was a, repping people who I know. But but it's like I doubt anyone in wrestling when when he got hired for that job, maybe vaguely. Oh yeah, Nick Khan was the guy who 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 made those those WWE deals. It was not that famous. I mean, I, you know, when, when he got hired, I knew enough to write some pretty big stuff at the time because I knew of Nick Khan, you know, I knew who he was, you know, it's like, and I know everything like that. He's a real non wrestling guy. Not that he has no wrestling. Um, and you know, he, you know, there's, you know, a couple of people have talked about the PR war and everything like that. And, and, you know, WWE is like, you know, they're so far ahead and aw should be the one you know that that um is at least the equal because that's not something that is necessarily um i don't know how to explain it but it's it's there it it, it would it, it, there's a cost but it's not an exorbitant cost um and i mean they've created a basic thing where the normalcy is to you know bash aw and 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 everything like that and if you defend AEW, you must be on the payroll when and the actuality is, is that is that for the most part, and this even showed it was that most of these people, you know, that it's like you, um, you know, there's there's a lot of people that are. Um, uh, how would I say it? Um, the, the same thing could happen in AEW and, and WWE or worse. 
and the reaction will be very very different i mm-hmm. mean in, in the sense of with wwe with the vince thing i mean there was not i mean yeah you know there there were people you know i mean obviously john pollock and brandon and myself and all that wrote about vince over and over and over again and still do and still write about that suit everyone else i mean i you know even, even from wwe it's like well, you know everyone's over it now and <laughs> and in a sense you know of course they are because they just want to um you know they they they, they want to seat at that table as opposed to actually look at the big issues and the the real stories and um i'm not surprised it's it's like that but it's it's like the state of the um it's a sad state of the um pro wrestling media because they're there's very few that want to be adversarial they all want to be friends um and you can't be you, can't you want be. they want to be in the good and, and, graces and, and, because being in the good graces means you get more access of interviews you don't get more information right you get but, but in some cases especially, they, may, they, they may they may give they may give you some scoops that's true they especially give, but especially for the content creators right because now the game is the, the wrestling media game is not just it's not journalism sto- stories that that you no, write no, no, it's, or, it's, or it's, scoops it's, it's also content creation and john pollock just wrote something uh, earlier today uh, about this whole scenario and, and, he, and he, you know he mentioned that his website um you know he's he's fortunate to be able to run a business that isn't necessitated by the access that companies give him like he can he he can write what he wants to write and it's not about getting access to people and but in the can content I, creation game yeah, which can I, can I say something real quick because yeah, yeah, go ahead. Brought some up, you brought something up that actually reminds me years and years and years ago um dana white and 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 boxing was like this too it wasn't just dana there was this there was a change in media in the sense that there was the the media you know the the newspapers the magazines like the sports illustrated your local newspaper blah 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 and then there was the people who came in often with no journalism background sometimes with the journalism background um that were website reporters and with mma because the real media didn't cover a lot of mma they were allowed to become like the key people in the Mm -hmm. early days of mma media but they didn't really many of them did not have a background in it and also you know there was and 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 the people who did who who ran the company um for reasons you know probably because the one the first one they dealt with was me you know when it comes to the dana whites and mark ratners and joe silvas and all that who knew me you know i knew mark ratner long before he was in ufc i knew joe silva i mean actually slightly before he was with or at the same time he was in ufc but also when he wasn't and and he and i actually were very good friends at, at certain points in time um i knew dana from the day he started in this thing you know and then this this thing comes in and you know it's people who were looking they were they were fans who wanted to write and be you know write about it they were it was a completely different thing well dana at one point and and again this happened also with boxing with a lot of the boxing media where the boxing media was thought to be behind the times and with dana it was just like you know whatever maybe he thought they were unprofessional who knows whatever you know but um you know he he basically banned um internet stuff and and these guys all cried and cried and it's like and i thought i was banned too i wasn't but but i didn't know that for like 10 months you know so so i never like went you know did anything but i never cried about brian didn't cry about it it's just like "Ah, it's the same thing that we get with wrestling we don't we didn't need access uh we didn't need a press credential uh to cover this i didn't need a press credential to call people up or anything like that you know what i mean um and you know so so i remember that period and but now it's a completely different period because you know mma like with wrestling unlike with the nba or the nhl or baseball where you have a whole group of reporters that have done it and had their training and done it for years and are legendary in their field you know mma was pretty much you know a startup and wrestling very similar because the real top top caliber reporters uh were not covering mma and they certainly weren't covering pro wrestling um so you know you you had this new thing and it was um you know it was so much about you know wanting to be friends and not wanting to say anything negative and you know it allowed i won't even say it allowed people to get away with a lot of shit, but it's just like you you know you didn't want to be negative and it's like wrestle joy you know it's like we only want to publish the good stuff 
You know, we don't want to dwell on the bad stuff. And I see it in, you know, what these, you know, I, I watch the, the, the WWE pressers and I, you know, when Levesque was doing it, I was on most of the calls, you know, almost all of them. And, and with Levesque, there were, you know, it's funny to me because there was always like, as soon as they said who the person was, I always knew it's, if it's, there's, if there's six, seven, eight people, I knew they're good question. It's going to be a good question no matter what. Okay. And if it wasn't, it was always, you know, these questions that made me gag and like, um, you know, I, I remember when, um, when I was in Hawaii and, and my girlfriend, um, so this would be the last Hawaii trip, November, right. Um, December, whatever it was when I was there. Um, and it was December and, um, there was a Tony Khan press conference, uh, for, um, one of the shows it might've been whatever it was. And we're listening and she's just like, she's from real media, you know, yeah. real background. And she's just like, what are you listening to? This is like the, and, and, and she did that with the, 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 the Levesque, the Levesque went after uh, Royal Rumble. It was like, Oh my God, she couldn't even believe it. It's like, yeah. where, what is this? And it's like, I I'm used to it. But when someone who's not a wrestling person is, you know, hears it for the first time, they're going like, you know, it's like one question out of 10 is like something that would be like, like as a comparison, if you were, you know, at a baseball or NFL press conference, and n nothing like this, nothing at all. And you know, the, it's, the it's people that do do that. They kind of get, you know, they kind they kind of get rushed out of there, you know, okay, move on. Let, let's, let's get some well, real the, questions. The, the, with, with, with WWE that you, you would, you would, you would um, get that. Tony is a hit and miss. Tony will be either, I can't speak, you know, thank you for the question. I can't speak of it. And people sometimes get frustrated with that. Or, or he just says the thing that he wants to say as his answer, whatever thing he's pushing next, he tries to somehow chain that together with the question. Yeah. And, and he, you know, he's because he's promoting but, but, at the same time. But, but even like in real politics, you get those kind of answers. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But, Completely. but you know, I watch, I'll watch a political press conference and, and, you know, they're trying to blow off real questions too, but you don't have these really terrible questions like you get on these, um, you know, a lot of these calls where, you know, I thought it was bad when with Dana, where it would be, um, oh, I'm from, I'm blah, blah, blah from San Diego. Dana, when are you going to bring UFC to San Diego? <laughs> like, uh, when are you going to bring UFC to Paris, France? Yeah, you know? I remember those. You know, and it's just like, oh, uh, God. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button and you'll never miss a video again.